Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and I finished now my three video series for Free Comic Book Day. We did the Free Comic Book Day like vlog, and then I did my interview with Jerry Duggan, the writer of New Secret Avengers, or Sa Savage Avengers, sorry, Savage Avengers comic. And then we also in the last episode reviewed the Free Comic Book Day Venom Absolute Carnage like prelude and stuff. So uh, if you haven't checked those out, please do go back and watch those. They're a lot of fun, and I definitely want to get to do more interviews with more creators. So the more views that those videos get, the better off chances that I can, you know, sell myself to someone like Marvel and be like, hey, I'd love to interview more of your guys or even, you know, other companies and for other shows that I work on, try to get more interviews that way. So please go watch those. Let me know what you think in those comments. But today what we're going to do, uh, it's Sunday, actually, it's the day after Free Comic Day, and I got to go to work soon. So I, I was like, you know, what comics have I reread recently that I could talk about that are pretty quick? So one of them I read was something you guys requested, and I'm so sorry I forgot who requested this. So if it is you, if you're the person who's uh, let me know about this book, let me know down in the comments below because I actually did not know that this comic book existed. It is called Spider-Man 3 The Black. And basically what this is, this was free, I believe, with a version of the Blu-ray or DVD of Spider-Man 3 when it came out. Um, I think that's what it was, or maybe it was promotional material that they handed out. Uh, but it's actually like a little like 20 or maybe 16 page comic, something like that, uh, that is, I would call a deleted scene from Spider-Man 3. And you actually get to see what it was like for Eddie Brock in Spider-Man 3 played by Topher Grace, you got to see what it was like for him to bond with the symbiote, and you got to see the abilities of the symbiote in ways that we couldn't see in the movie, or that they kind of, you know, rushed over in the movie. And this stuff is really good. I'll be honest with you, if this was in the movie, I think this would have fixed a lot of people's problems with Venom's interpretation, even in the movie. I think they would have accepted that newer interpretation, the Topher Grace version, if this scene was in it. At least I would have. I thought this was really good. Written by Brian Michael Bendis, uh, who you know I'm very critical of, um, but I know he's a fantastic writer and, and, and written a lot of great stuff. And then Mark Bagley, uh, one of the best Spider-Man and Venom artists of all time, if not the best in, in some of our eyes, I know. So um, this storyline is basically starts off right when Eddie Brock gets the symbiote. So the church bells are going off. Peter's ripping it and he's looking up. And he's like, Parker? And then the symbiote falls down on him and covers him completely in the goo. And you see actually Eddie Brock's like internal, you know, dialogue and or monologues, I guess. And he's like, he's like, uh, get it off me, get it off me. It's so cold, it's so cold. And then it cuts this big, beautiful uh, two-page spread here of him as Venom. And he's got the symbol on him. So they drew him full on comic book version, uh, you know, for sure. Even though he kind of looked like this in a movie too, but they, they still have like the, the, the Spider-Man costume design, like uh, like vein things on him and stuff. But, uh, but mostly he's the comic book version, which is pretty neat. Um, and so he's like, oh my God, it's inside me. It's breathing for me. It's, it's in my pores. And, you know, he's like freaking out about it. And then it's like everything goes black for a few minutes and he's like stumbling his way out of the church and he can't see. He's still developing the eyes, you know, for it. Even though the eyes are there, he's still trying to see through them and stuff. And he's, and it's really, really fascinating. I was like, wow, this would have been a great scene in the movie. And then you have like these three kids who are trying to buy these hot dogs from a hot dog vendor, but it's raining and the hot dog vendor's like, look, I'm closing up. I, I'm, you know, I'm done for the day. I already put away most of my stuff and they're like please we'll pay double whatever it is we're hungry like you know you're the only place around here right now and he's just like sorry I'm, I'm, I'm closing up shop and then Venom freaking out like jumps out and attacks these people he's feeling cold and then he, he senses their warmth you know like they're, they're like little batteries moving around and he's like you know almost like ultimate Venom in a way where he and I think Bendis is kind of trying to hint at that a little bit like his version of ultimate Venom and uh, you know he like webs these people up and he's like gonna eat them but then a flood of memories comes into his mind and this is something I really wanted to see in the Venom movie and that they didn't do and I was really bummed about and something I wanted to see in this movie in Spider-Man 3 which is the memory transfer that the symbiote does the symbiote when it's on you know Peter Parker and it goes on Eddie Brock in this book it's transferring Peter's memories into him so Eddie Brock is seeing the Green Goblin he's seeing Uncle Ben he's seeing Aunt May and he's like who are these people? What is going on? Like, Eddie's like, what is this? What are you showing me? I don't understand. And uh, and then Eddie's like still dealing with that, like as the people that he tried to web up, like they got away. And then the cops show up and they start shooting at him. And, uh, you know, he's like, no. And he's like fighting them off and jumps off, you know, like and, and goes out into the city. And he's like trying to piece together what's going on in his mind. I would have loved that in the Venom movie when the, the homeless woman 
who Eddie saw, you know, she was in the, the case and she busts out and, and coughs and transfers the symbiote onto Eddie. Um, it would have been great if Eddie, when he went back to his apartment, he's like throwing up and he's like, you know, dizzy and everything, is if he was seeing her life. He was seeing people ignoring her as, you know, she wanted change from people as they're walking by. Like, cause she, he was so charming to her with the newspaper thing. And I love that scene so much. And, uh, and that's Melora Walters that plays the, the homeless lady in that scene. And I was like, oh man, I, I would love to have seen more of that character. And I would have loved to have seen it through that way. Like I thought that would have been a creative and comic book accurate way to, uh, to show the powers of the symbiote and how it could transfer memories from one person to another. And maybe even Eddie, use that in his fight against Riot or, you know, Carlton Drake, where he transfers part of the symbiote and it dumps Eddie's mind into Carlton's mind to like disorient him. Cause that was, I think that was the ending of The Crow, which by the way is about to celebrate its 25th anniversary and they're re-releasing it in theaters and I'm probably gonna go see it. I love that movie. Uh, but in it, he that's how he beats the bad guy at the end. He takes all of his memory cause he has the power to transfer his memories into other people's minds and then take their memories as well. Um, and then he transfers his memories and his pain into the villain to kill the villain. So I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a crow fan I wanted something like that, but I like, it's a power of the symbiote and I like that. So this book explores that and it shows Eddie Brock and he's like basically up on this roof now. He's run away from the cops. Those people he attacked got away and uh, he's looking down at his hands. And next thing you know, he sees Spider-Man's hands and he's like, what is going on? What is happening to me? And then that's when everything becomes clear. He sees Peter Parker. He sees Peter as Spider-Man, like looking in the mirror, like after from scenes of the first two movies and stuff, which I thought was a great use of that footage. I'm like, man, well done, Bendis <laughs> and Bagley, like really, really well done. Because uh, that would have been cool to see in the third Spider-Man movie of these clips from the first two movies uh, flooding through Eddie Brock's mind and him understanding that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, uh, which is pretty cool. I was pointing at the dialogue balloons that say that. So um, yeah, so really good stuff. And then he's remembering the, the kiss with Gwen through Peter's eyes and then what Peter felt at that moment. And then also remembering Mary Jane and uh and that you know even peter even kissing gwen still felt guilty about kissing gwen uh even in the moment even though like part of his mind was even though he wasn't focused on that he was just trying to be like happy-go-lucky spider-man for the audience so uh it's pretty cool and then he has that line where peter says to him uh you want forgiveness find religion and uh, and so you know eddie keeps playing that over and over and over in his head and he's like all right well let's go find gwen you know i i love gwen and and this suit wants peter back but i'm not going to give it you know, back to Peter. I'm going to use it to kill Peter. And I'm going to prove to this suit that I'm more worthy. And, uh, and that I have a woman I love too. And of course we know in the movie, he does, you know, he's still like kind of crazy. Like he doesn't really love Gwen. Uh, or, you know, he, it's like he loves her in like a weird way, like a sick way, you know, and kind of a way. So when he goes to her apartment, her dad leaves because, you know, Captain Stacy finds out, oh, there was like a shooting with cops and a giant monster. I got to go. Um, so he sneaks in through the window and as he's going to go tell Gwen, hey, I love you. I, you know, I want to be with you. Look at the power I have now. We can, you know, we could be together. As he's going to tell her that, he comes across this file of Uncle Ben's death and sees Flint Marco on there and learns about Flint Marco, his connection to Peter Parker. Um, and now he's piecing it all together, why Peter hates Flint and why he wants to take Sandman down. And then he also learns about Flint Marco's daughter. So it helps set up that scene, which we're gonna get replayed here in a second. Um, but then, you know, Gwen hears something, she goes into the other room and instead of Eddie going to tell Gwen how he felt, he was like, he's like, I got something even better. I'm going to go destroy Spider-Man. And so he leaves and uh, and goes to find Flint Marco. So you have Flint, you know, Sandman walking through the alley here. And then boom, you get a retelling of that scene where Venom's just, in the movie at least, it seems like he's just arbitrarily and randomly, conveniently swinging by and Sandman knocks him down and he's like, I'm going to destroy you, Spider-Man. And then he reveals himself to be Venom. And he's like, yeah, I'm not Spider-Man. He's like, but I know who he is, like who he loves and how we can hurt him. Um, are you in? So that whole scene is replayed. And now it makes a little bit more sense because you actually got to see Venom figure out who Flint Marco was and know to go look for him, which I thought was really cool. So they did, yeah, they did a really good job. And then they have here where Eddie, uh, you know, puts the suit away. It's, you know, and he becomes the cab driver and he kidnaps Mary Jane. And then there's this really creepy moment where he basically is flooded with Peter Parker's memories and he's no longer really in love with Gwen or he's not thinking too much about Gwen. He's actually like being really gross to Mary Jane. And he's like, I love you. I love you more than Peter. So we'll, you know, and I'm here to save you from Peter. Peter has tormented you. Like, look how many times he broke your heart over these years. Like, I'm going to save you from him. I'm going to lure him here and I'm going to kill him for you. And, uh, you know, and that's like Eddie's initial plan. I'm like, hey, that's very Eddie Brockish. That's very Eddie Brock from the comics-ish. Um, so at first I was like all into that, but then they kind of change it where uh, Sandman's like, 
what are you doing to her? Like, why are you getting all close and weird to her? And uh, and he's like, you know, and it's him battling the memories of Peter and himself, like Eddie and Peter uh, in his mind. And I'm like, wow, that's that's really, that's, I don't know. I thought that was really cool how they did that, um, even though it makes him even more, you know, a creep still. He's still a creep. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so it, it, it this scene played out really well, but really dark too. And then he's like, look, either we're going to kill Peter in front of her, or maybe I'll kill her in front of Peter, whatever it is, because you can still see the duality of him fighting the suit, which still wants Peter. Uh, it still loves Peter. Um, but at the same time, like Eddie lo is loving the suit now and he wants to be with the suit. And so it's like, it's a very different dynamic than the comics in a way, even though in the comics, the suit also for a, a period of time did want Peter back. So, uh, you know, cause it felt rejected by him and stuff. And Eddie Brock being rejected by everyone else is now like, I hate, I'm with this suit and it's rejecting me, but I don't want it to reject me. I want to prove to it that I'm the one it should be with. And we're going to do all these things and we're going to hurt Peter for hurting the suit. And then the suit starts coming around to, you know, like Eddie Brock's way of thinking in a way. So I kind of like that. And then it ends with, you know, know Sandman going like you know what you know, what are we gonna do when's he coming and Ed, and Eddie's like he's on his way now and he's like how do you know that and he goes because I can feel him coming and then boom you get the shot there of him swinging into the battle and then that's it that's the rest of the book is actually these little like um the you know, bios of these characters like Sandman and, and Spider-Man and Venom and stuff so it's uh yeah it's pretty cool they did a really good job on this here's Venom they use some of the ultimate artwork as well from uh, Mark Bagley. So uh, yeah, it's nice. It, I thought this was a cool thing and I'm glad it was recommended to me because I had no idea that this book existed. And now that I, after I read it, I was like, I got to talk about it because it legitimately, if that scene was in the movie, like still you got the dancing stuff and some of the corny stuff that's in the third movie. But I feel like if this part was in the movie, if that was an actual sequence that they filmed and shot and you know had all together and then finished, um, I think that would have added a lot to the movie and I think it would have added a lot to the character of Venom because we didn't get much of him at the end of the movie. So if you got these like maybe five to ten minutes of screen time squeezed in there to see his motive, to understand his motivation more, to see the duality more, him battling with the suit more, the memories, ingesting the memories, figuring out who Peter is that way. Like if we would have got that stuff, I think people would probably have a few less criticisms of that movie or at least of the, that version of Venom. And I think people would have bought into it a little bit more with these more comic accurate uh, sequences that they could have included. So I don't know if Bendis wrote this off of the script and maybe that was originally in the script. I don't know. Or if he just wrote it, you know, they showed him a cut of the movie and they were like, you know, anything you can add in there. And he was like, yeah, sure. I can add in a sequence of Eddie Brock or something. Um, I got to say, I'm quite impressed because I've always got the feeling that uh, that Bendis didn't really care too much for the Eddie Brock character or even Venom as a whole. And that's why he did such a radical, you know, different version of them in Ultimate Comics. But maybe that's just me projecting something or I'm misunderstanding him. Uh, because in this, he wrote it really well. I, I thought he did a good job of balancing the movie Topher Grace Eddie Brock version with what we know in the comic books. So if you're able to find a copy of this, I think there's a digital one maybe on Comixology. I can't remember uh, if I saw a digital copy or not, but uh, you might have to hit eBay for this storyline because uh, or this version of the book because I don't think it's anywhere else. And I don't know if I'm sure at some point they had to have reprinted this in some kind of Spider-Man trade. But unfortunately, I don't know what it is because I literally just found out this existed a few months ago when you guys recommended it to me. So if you've read this, let me know what you think. If you haven't, let me know what you think of what we just went over here. Would this have made you like Spider-Man 3 a little bit more? Would does it? Do you not care? Does Spider-Man 3 just suck in your eyes no matter what? Uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are down below. And if you haven't watched our Spider-Man 3 review, because we did actually a review of the editor's cut, which I thought was weird that they gave the editor a cut of the movie. I guess because they couldn't get Sam back to do a different cut, uh, or maybe they just didn't have enough footage to make the movie that much different. But uh, the editor's cut is out, and we did a review of that probably like six or seven months ago, maybe even longer. So I'll try to find that episode and put a link down below if you haven't checked it out so you can watch that and this one back to back so thank you so much i'd love to hear your thoughts let me know down in the comments below and we'll continue our conversation down there and thank you once again all of you uh especially the person who recommended this to me i'm so sorry i'm blanking right now but let me know who you are down below if you recommend this book to me i'm glad you did because it was awesome thank you so much for watching as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace